Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Friday Night Magic here at GameSwap Mason, brought to you by Top Deck Productions. This is uh, round three of five for our, uh, our modern FNM. And we have some green stuff happening. We do have some green stuff happening. Lots of things that tap for mana. We have um, four permanents that tap for green mana. That's an elvish... Uh, that's a visionary. Yeah. There's Is it four permanents that tap for green mana and mm -hmm. an elvish visionary. An elvish visionary now which draws five. a card. Now there's five. Elvish visionary draws a card. It does draw a card. A single card. Just one. And it's a 1-1. One, one, Just makes... one, one time. Okay. All right. So... Uh, this Kiki deck, we're going to see a lot of one ofs here. It's basically oh, yeah. a commander deck. Oh, yeah. Like, right now, we've got Restoration Angel on the top of the deck. We've got Corsive Crew Fix and Birds of Paradise, which is what allowed uh, Alan to cast the. Uh, Birds of Paradise let him cast the uh, Corsair there on turn two. Absolutely. It's yeah. powerful stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, both of these decks are playing Court of Calling. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, that's and the version. Elves. That's the version of elves that Paul uh, has brought to the table. I'm fairly certain he's playing a uh, a chord list, um, but it could be a lead the stampede. <laughs> the elves deck always plays uh, collect a company, and then either plays court of calling or lead the stampede, depending on like what build. The court of calling elves deck is trying to do. It, it plays a lot of one ofs. It plays like a lot of uh, silver bullet creatures to uh, disrupt their opponent's game plan, as well as the Devoted Druid-Vizier combo. The black-green elves deck is trying to go more wide and overwhelm their opponent with, uh, with a bunch of creatures and then play a, uh, a Shaman of the pack. I can go a little bit more in detail into, in, into both uh, as, as they come up. Now I know but, uh, that's that's the that's the axis the elves deck is attacking on. I know Paul is playing a little bit of a subpar list currently. He his his list is currently put together for a team unified modern team. Right. So he's playing he's got a few weird choices in his deck. Yeah, uh, they've been really trying to him and his team have really been trying to figure out the best 75 for each of them because of the restrictions of team unified modern. What are the restri what speaking of speaking of which what are the restrictions for that Connor? So each player has access to you know, their whole decks, but um, any given play set of cards can only exist in one deck. For example, if you had Burned and Jun on a team, only one of those players would get to play Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. And if you had Blue-White Control and Elves on a team, only one of those players would get to play Spreading Seas. And by Elves, I mean Merfolk. Uh, it, it's something like that. And, and, and you can't break it up. You can't do two bolts here and two Yeah, that's there. the unfortunate thing. It's um, not four between all of the decks. Any one of those decks, players yeah. is playing one of at least one of any card. Yep. That player is the only player on the team who can play that card. Yep. <laughs> so um, that's the kind of list we're seeing from Paul here. So we, um, I believe we're playing it Sans Horizon Canopies, Sans Path to Exiles in the sideboard so that his teammate can play those. But aside from that, we've got uh, a pretty standard elf list here. Looks like he might be playing the, the three color build because he's got the caverns and the territories, which I don't know why they weren't always playing Caverns and Territories. Uh, and um, we got a, a big old Shaman of the Pack coming down right here. Yep. We saw a Lightning Helix in response to the Shaman so that Alan can take a little bit less damage. Yeah, so the, the Lightning Helix removed a creature in response to the trigger as well as gained him three life, so it effectively gained him four life. Removing that creature causes the trigger to check and see fewer creatures and thus doing fewer damage. That's right. In spite of... Al yeah, it's, it's interesting, like... Both of these players have more mana than their lands would indicate, because their creatures tap for mana. Absolutely. These decks are actually very similar in a lot yeah. of ways. Um, I think that the Elves list is much more streamlined and has a much better game plan, where the Kiki Chord deck, you know, it has that infinite combo with Kiki and Resto Angel, but the rest of the deck is very toolboxy, um, yeah. meaning that a lot of the cards that you see in the main deck... Sure, certainly not a majority of, but uh, a good number of these cards are probably dead in a lot of the main deck matchups. It, yeah. But that's why they're one-offs. Yeah, the, the Kiki deck is really trying to grind. It's a value-based deck, whereas, like, the Elves has that, but that's secondary. It's, its primary plan is just to play a bunch of these, like, little guys and then pump them and win. Now, it looks like Alan is playing the Eldritch Evolution package here, which I think is great. It 
is functionally more copies of Court of Calling because it just lets you, you know, sacrifice your creatures that you may not need or may just need less than something else, and you more or less get to just choose whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a it's a good way to do it. <laughs> so um, looks like we went and got we went and got a chain whirler with that one. Look at that! Look at that goblin chain whirler, Zach. That's we, a heck uh, of a card. We Eldritch evolution into a goblin uh, into chain a main whirler, deck out, into a main deck board wipe. That was that was something else. And that that's pretty good. I like that a lot. That's that's like the bonfire of the damned for this deck. Uh, we took out a big chunk of Paul's. Can we get field. a Goblin Chain Whirler brought up? We got a this big is a chunk standard, of Paul's field. This is a standard All Star. Um, hasn't quite made waves yet in modern, but as we saw there, it was pretty effective against and, a deck with a lot of one ones. And that is surely a one of. Um, oh yeah. He probably has one to two additional in his sideboard. It's the other uncastable Goblin in this deck. Mm -hmm. The other one being Kiki. Right. And even then, you do occasionally cast Q. Goblin Chain Whirler is a 3-3 three, three with first strike for triple red. Triple, triple red. red. That's quite the cost. Um, when it enters the battlefield, it deals one to each opponent, and each creature and each Planeswalker they control. I really like this because it it has Planeswalker. And my god, like we need more things that can target, uh, that can deal with Planeswalkers in for some sure. fashion. Even though most of the time one damage to the Planeswalker doesn't matter, mo it, it still is, is it's often something. a one turn. It's it's something. It, it makes them all one turn slower. Sometimes it makes the minus abilities in the Planeswalkers a little bit more awkward. And the other great thing about the Chain Whirler, at, at, which is what it's being called, it's the Chain Whirler. Oh yeah. The Chain Whirler not only wipe Paul's board, but it leaves behind a 3-3 with First Strike, which Paul can't attack through that. <laughs> like, what, What's he going to do? All his creatures are smaller than that. Yeah. Um, he can always get the Elvish Visionary out. Or, excuse me, the Arch Druid. The Arch Druid. Oh, except... God. Oh, oh wow. Resto go. on the Chain Whirler. That's value. And see, that, that's what we're talking about here. Alan has been able to find the one of in his deck that lines up really well against Paul's deck. And he deck. really did go search for it. Yeah. Which I is mean, why the did. one of works. Yeah, exactly. He, like, he was able to get the one of. That's very good. He found the one-up that's very good, and he's just pressing it to his advantage. And that Resto Angel is, I don't know that it's a four-of, but it's definitely at least a two to three-of, because mm -hmm. that's part of his main win condition. It's and part of all win <laughs> It's a part of one of it, his several It incidentally um, just makes... Uh, like we're about to see. Features. Like we're about to see here. So Paul's here's, scooping here's it up. For five. Paul is no... Uh, Paul is no stranger to Court of Calling. He knows what's happening. So and what Alan was going to do there, and I really, I, I would like to see them play it out. Can we put Kiki Jiki Mirror yeah. Breaker up, please? For, for, the, for the camera, I'd like to see them, you know, actually play it out. Um, but he was going to go and get Kiki Jiki and make an infinite number of copies of Restoration Angel. And how it works is, you know, you get Restoration Angel, which when it enters the battlefield, it exiles and then re-enters uh, a target creature that you control, so it flickers it. And what Kiki does, as you'll see here, is you put a token copy of a non-legendary creature you control into play, and it gets haste. So, yep. you tap Kiki, you copy the angel, the angel token enters and flickers Kiki. Kiki has haste, meaning that it just taps and copies the Restoration Angel, which... Copies or which flickers yep. the Kiki, which copies the Angel, which flickers the Kiki. Now it's not difficult to interrupt this combo at any stage here if you have the right card, but uh, if it goes uninterrupted, you have an arbitrarily large number of three fours with flying and haste, and that is the game. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, you know, it says it makes a token, but there isn't a token to make. Like there isn't like a three four. Yeah. There I would love to see. In some master set that make a token that's a copy like a token of a lot of the cards that people make tokens yeah, of. Yeah, so like for example, similar to the way we have the eternalized tokens from Amaket, yeah. like it would be cool to have a collection of tokens of Deceiver X Arch, Pester Might, and Restoration Angel. Just um, you know, what's just the to have. What, what's the green there's a green blue one. Like the lizard the green blue there's one. a lizard fish that does the same thing. Uh Cre bound, yeah. Bounding Crasis. Bounding Crasis. And, That's another um, one you can target. There's also um, the the red one with the three three with haste, uh, zealot something zealot. Mm. It's it's I'm I'm drawing a blank here, um, but yeah, we, we there's about five or six creatures that famously go infinite with Kiki Jiki. Yeah, um, zealous conscripts. There there we are. That's the card. Uh, another one would be like a uh, 
would, would be Feldar Guardian with the Sahili. So you would make an artifact. So you would make an art. It would be an artifact creature token. That's a one four, mm -hmm. and is the and is the cat, because right. that's something that goes with Sahili Rye. Absolutely. So like it would be really great, I think, to have tokens that are token copies of these cards that we con commonly have a token co like the card says make a make a token create a token that's a copy of this card well they don't have there's not a token to create you have to represent it with something else and that's you know like you you and your opponent understand it you 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 come to an understanding but that's mostly representing the board state like, now, just like commonly just flat out. the way that they represent kiki combos on tokens is by conceding yeah i mean it's arbitrary because you're creating an infinite number of of tokens, I still think it. Unless would be you're cool. like me and you like to play Rakdos Charm. Yeah, I mean, that 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 all said, you're right. Like the deck is just oh, like the game is just over. Yeah, absolutely. But you you have to. Have that doesn't mean that. that doesn't mean that uh, it wouldn't be cool. It wouldn't. It would be a nice gesture. I, agree. I think it, I think it would be an interesting um, thing for for Wizards to print out just just because it's something that a lot of people do. It, they've obviously recognized that Modern's a real format. You know, and the fact that. There's just more support for they brought back the Pro Tour and everything. I don't like that Paul didn't have a turn one play. That's a problem. He he has a doesn't he have a uh, a guy in his hand? A vizier? Did I did I see a vizier or, did, or do my eyes deceive me? He has a cord. He can cord for that vizier and make infinite mana next turn. Yeah, man. And he has another cord. He's a backup cord. He has the land. He wins. Think, this is the he he can win the game at instant I speed. Think, isn't he just supposed to... He can't do it now. He's just supposed to do it now, right? No, no, no. Okay, so here's how... The combo in Elves actually is different than in the other Vizier combo decks. Now, the other Vizier combo decks, you generally use Walking Ballista to win the game. Um, in Elves, you need a Zuri. To yeah. Be, to be a dump for that infinite man. Now, he can, right now, court for Vizier, and then make infinite mana, mm -hmm. and then cast that other cord to go get Azuri, but that doesn't do anything until his turn. He's, he can wait until Alan's end step. He's going to do it now. And he's, well, that he, yeah, he can do it now and actually protect him from the Helix using Azuri's pump. Yeah, he, he just said, I can't, yeah, Alan said, and then you kill me, and Paul says, I can't kill you on the spot. It which is correct. The, it involves the combat step, but now he's going to do the other we're gonna one. We're going to cord for Azuri, pump it until that druid does not die to Helix, and then untap and win. Yeah. We're going to make infinite mana, and then activate Azuri infinite times, and we're going to get infinite. Unless overlays. Alan has another way, unless Alan can deal with, can break up this combo on his turn. There is no way to break up this combo at this point. Uh, shy of a path to exile, there is actually no way to break up this combination. He drew path. Path to exile. Well, it's too bad that Paul can... Fatal push would do it, too. too you think Kiki Cord plays Fatal Push? Dude, I don't know what Kiki Cord <laughs> plays, man. You're right. <laughs> um... Actually, the the path doesn't do it here. Isn't isn't it Paul's turn? Was that not? That was the end of Paul's turn. Oh, that, that was that. the end of that Paul's turn. That was the end turn. of his turn, yeah. That might do it. Infinite green. So infinite green in response. Uh, we're going to let it get path. I think he should just sacrifice it. Oh, he can't sacrifice it because it doesn't get counters. What do I know? Uh, trick mind would do it. I, I don't expect to be seeing trick bind. You, 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 do, you don't? You don't. I don't know what's going to happen out of He's Kiki going Ford. to cord for Nimble Obstructionist, and then he's going to cord for Teamer Sabretooth and bounce the Nimble Obstructionist with it, and then Nimble Obstructionist the trigger. Paul's so. just going to cast a Collected Company with infinite mana. Boom. There you well, go. Paul doesn't have infinite mana anymore. Sure he does. He just made it. Well, yeah, he... he he didn't really. Okay, because... here's the voice of resurgence. Let's get voice of resurgence up. So, this card all, is a tome. Out of yeah, this has like, this this, this card set a new precedent. Really, I, in, in my opinion, it was like, like this card has like a paragraph of text, and we see this a lot more now, where cards just have like this like this mountain of text in their text box. Okay, so voice of resurgence for. A white and a green, you get a 2-2 two, two elemental. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn, or when Versa Voice of Resurgence dies, because those are the same thing, create a green and white elemental creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. What That's attack? A so what we realistically have here are two different triggered abilities mm -hmm. that each trigger off of different occurrences. Now the first thing is, if it is not your turn, excuse me, if it is your turn, and your opponent casts any spell, you get a trigger. And the trigger makes... The token, which is a star star, yeah, with the clause, 
this creature's power. That's is, like a card. There are yeah. cards that are just that. That's their text box. Right, and this just makes that. And it just yeah, it just makes it for two. Yeah, for two mana. And and if you want to deal with this stupid thing, it he, they get one. So, so you, you you have to not only deal with Voice of Resurgence with a Path to Exile, but you, you have, have to, to do it on your own turn. You know what I like to do to Voice of Resurgence? Chain. I to like the rocks. to chain it to the rocks, baby, because they don't, they don't get jack. But uh, that's another tale for another time. So what's great about so out of all the different cards that Kiki Cord plays, they play four Voice of Resurgence because that is a great target for um, for their Eldritch Evolution. With uh, when you Eldritch Evolution the uh, the Voice of Resurgence, you automatically get a uh, a token. You yeah. can voice. What they like to do is they voice into Piakir and Alar. And Piakir and Alar gives you three bodies. So that's a 4-4 four, four token, a 2-2, two, two, and two one ones. That's eight power. Most decks can't deal with that. The, vo the voice token is such an underrated part of the car. Like, people, people just think of it as a creature that gives... You know, it's just an extra body, but it's always a one-one because it counts itself. And every time you play a creature, it just gets bigger. And if you play another voice, oh my gosh, yeah, it's so big the because the voice just keeps it. Bigger. It's an annoying card. Like it changes the game once it's down. It like, does. Um, that said, it's it's not difficult to play around, but it does put the person who needs to deal with it in a little bit of an awkward situation most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and here's that token. Um, like we said, it just says this creature's power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures you control. Right now, it's a 3-3. Three, three. I don't know if we're going to use dice to represent that, but it, it's it's easy to keep track of. You can just keep track of it visually. Uh, I don't really like it when people use dice for it. I don't like it when they use dice with sync, like with the with the dots. I would really like to see dice that have one slash one, one two slash two, three slash three. But it's really just unneeded, especially at competitive REL. You're put in a situation where that's actually derived information. You don't have to represent that. No, you if don't. If your opponent miscounts, I would. Like, then I, it's on them. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I would carry one so I could put it on my opponent's thing. I carry around a Tarmogoyf dice so I can put it on my opponent's Tarmogoyf. And my Swift Spears. It's mostly for my Swift Spears, but if my opponent has a Tarmogoyf, I, I don't like, like to, to use it on my Swift Spears simply because my opponent can misread Swift Spear. Yeah. Because you don't have to announce those triggers until it goes to combat. Oh, you don't have to announce Jack, but it's just fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, at competitive REL, I get a little bit more cutthroat with things like that. Um, I, 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 I like to keep I like When to keep playing it Tron, honest. a lot of times, people, people, think, people think I'm an asshole because I, um, when people ask me how much mana I have, I just point to my lands. <laughs> It's not my responsibility to count this. At video. least they're English. Have you seen people like you? You do the. I, you I do, actually you it, do the one of each art thing. Have, but some people, some people have them, all yeah, not English. I I saw I was playing. I was sitting next to a guy at this last open, mm -hmm. and he had full Korean Tron. The whole deck was Korean, but the Tron pieces all had matching art. Oh, that's cool. I so appreciate. I, I feel like that was probably specifically because of the foreign, which made me, which indicated to me that he was not. Was not not only not trying to, but trying not to confuse his opponents. That's cool. I, I just like that. the art. I like all of the arts. It's not my intention to part confuse of my opponent. It's a part of Magic history. They didn't. They exactly. only did it for it's that the third set. set. Yeah. It is the third set of Magic: The Gathering. And they only it's, did it's it for the it. second expansion. And they only did it for that set, like the multiple different arts. That's not true. Um, there, there's a, a handful of of other cards like that from other sets. Fallen Empires is a good example. Yeah, that's Fallen fair. Empires has, that's I fair. think, three different goblin grenades just off the top of my head. That's all I can think of. <laughs> um, but that, I think it's it's kind of a unique way they do that. I know um, High Tide from Fallen Empires also has. So we two saw grenades. we saw elves pick up that game. Yeah, this is a this is a quick two zero for elves. Um, Alan just didn't really see all the pieces that he needed. It didn't Alan like. get game one? Alan got game one, right? Uh, it says two zero. Maybe I don't that, think that's accurate. That, maybe that was... Alan got game one. He got his combo game one, remember? That's he right. Quoted, he that's quoted right. for Kiki, that's yeah. Right. So we'll, yeah. we'll slap our stream So there you go. It's all about the play and the draw. It's all about the play and the draw. Um, I've been playtesting a lot of Legacy with my friend Kevin. Uh, lands versus Death and Taxes, and we've determined that whoever's on the draw wins. Nice. That's I, cool. I'm sure it's absolutely coincidence. It no, I think there are a lot of because both of us were like, taking. There are a lot of matchups like that. I kind of have that opinion about burn uh, against shadow. I think it's almost better to be on the draw. I think that's almost true against burn versus most decks. De decks that are three colors and use shock lands. I think you're kind of incentivized as the burn player to be on the draw, so, so that you, you see more cards. Yeah, you you get to see more cards, and your opponent has the opportunity to take between three and five damage. Yeah, but they one. can also have the they also have the opportunity to just put their lands into play tapped. 
That's true. But if they don't know what you're on... Oh, yeah, game one. Absolutely. Yeah, game one. Game one, absolutely. I've noticed that a lot about Shadow. Like, game, if I'm on the draw against Shadow, they'll just go all out. Right. They'll, like, they'll like cycle Street they'll cycle street Wraith, Fetch, Shock, do the, do the whole thing, and then uh, and then I untap and right. play my Goblin. I, one of my more entertaining games against a mid-range deck like that, I was playing Burn. My hand was stellar. It was one creature and, like, three to four redundant bolt effects. Yep. It was absolutely stellar. Um, I was playing against. It had to have been Abzan or something. He 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 won the roll and took the draw. He fetched shock. Thoughtseize took the play. Concede. Excuse me. Yeah, he took the play. He fetched shock. Thoughtseize looked at my hand and conceded right away. All right. Uh, I don't know if he thought that maybe I would put him on a different deck, but they all the decks that are fetch shock Thoughtseize and you play basically the same. You don't really sideboard differently from one to the other. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe it may be a hair here and there, but I don't think enough to really justify a straight concession. But I bring in I, Firecraft against. I, I think he did the math against uh, against Shadow. I don't bring that I think in. He just against looked John. at my hand, did the math, looked at his hand. Maybe he didn't have an answer to the creature, and he just like okay, one to two swings from this creature plus the rest of his hand, and that's just the game. I think he, he might have just decided that there's no way for him to to come out of that, and and he may have been right. I didn't know what it was in his hand, but that's the sort of thing that happens when you're on the draw as Burn. I've I've had somebody playing when I was playing Tron on Ab they played Abzan, they fetch shock thought sees conceded. Yeah, I mean it's Tron, dude. You're right. That that's fair. I've I've also had an, a different this was when Abzan was actually popular when I played against Abzan like every other round it opens. Yeah. I've had an Abzan player just concede to my turn turn one land drop. Maybe they're like they mulligan to maybe six. Fair enough. And they just I played land pass it was an urza's whatever and he just conceded um i guess his intent his intention was that i talked to him it really helps match. yeah his intention was to not give me the opportunity to sideboard correctly i just sideboarded for mid-range because that's the only so type of deck that i would the play the that. play in the draw in summation the play in the draw doesn't always determine a match sometimes you know it doesn't sometimes it's not a, a total loss to be on the draw yeah it, even if even if you would prefer to be on the play now sometimes it's advantageous it, ha it has its advantages. Absolutely. Um, so here we're going to see both players start off with Forest. And uh, we got a creature on one side, but no creature on the other. I think we're going to see a creature. There's now. definitely points, on, point, points for Paul for playing out a creature. I have the best one, too. A Heritage Ooh, Druid. That, ha that sets him up for the most explosive start. Or, okay. Selfless Spirit. That's an interesting decision. Uh, Selfless Spirit is a, like a one of in a lot of in most decks that can play. Oh, Polly, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not convinced oh, that Paul. Selfless Spirit is actually worth keeping in. You see that? Yeah. Paul just passed the turn. He missed a land drop. He even had. Oh, he, he his hand's insane. Look at that hand. If he oh, draws a land, boy. it's just nuts. He's got a. Uh, he's got a Dwinin's Elite in that hand. Oof. Uh, okay, well. We, yeah, that's fine. I mean, that'll do for the moment. Um, he's got a Twinin's Elite, which attacked. turns into three mana, which turns into more spells. He's got a Cord. I would not put it past Paul to either win or put himself in a position he to can't, win the following. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see what he does? Uh, you see what he just did here? You see what he just did here with his mana base? He filtered. He used the forest to. Uh, to he used the forest to make. To, he used the forest to filter into red. With the uh, with the firelit thicket, yeah, and then used white off of the uh, off the sacred foundry. So he he cast he cast the lightning helix for three, yeah. Because he would have stuff. either a green or a red left over from the uh, from I'm, from that exchange. I'm not exchange. a huge fan of the filter lands for that reason. They just, yeah, they're he's just gotta so awkward. He's got to cast his uncastable goblin somehow. Yeah, you're not wrong. Both of them. Both of the uncastable goblins. You know, if he slams a, if he just windmills a chain whirler here, I think Paul just scoops. There's there's not way, really a way to come back or just like another bolt. I'm surprised Paul kept that hand. From what I can tell, it's pretty nut. Like it was a high risk, high reward, and the risk won. Tireless the tracker didn't come there. Value. Oof. Oof best, especially with that fetch land. Best green card in the format. It's a good one. The best green card in the format is Ancient Stirrings. That's a colorless card. <laughs> and you know it costs it. green. Yeah, but it, it it's colorless and you know it. If they had printed it in over it the gate watch, it would have to void. That card should have to void. It's an honorary to void card. It it's really been is. decided. Just like Warping Will is an honorary charm. <laughs> and we're going to scoop he's it up. Paul didn't okay. see the land. So that, that was unfortunate. Any de This can happen to any deck at any time. Don't act like you're better than this. Like anybody ever. 
Like, he had the combo. I don't necessarily disagree uh, that Life in the Loom's the best. The Trilus Tractor's probably, I want to say it's the best green creature. It's a format. good, it's a Life good one. Life in the Loam just enables so much. Oh, it's absurd. It's, okay, so, what we, uh, unfortunately, Paul didn't get a second land. Not gonna happen to anybody. Like I said, don't act like you're better. You know, yeah, like that, we've all been there. That hand it was uh, was very much high risk, high reward. Um, I definitely saw Dwayne's lead in there, which which synergizes great with the um, the hierarch, the the heritage druid, the heritage druid that was in play, which makes three mana. And I believe I saw an arch druid. So we we had there. If he had a second land, or if that mana dork stuck, we had. A, uh, an arch druid coming down the next turn, plus some mana. Carlos, thank you for the follow. We really appreciate it. We've got a backup match for you. Hopefully. I'm, hopefully. I, I really hope we do. Uh, <laughs> so, I appreciate Paul and Alan. Paul, Alan. I appreciate Paul and Alan. <laughs> They're just palling it up. Palling it up. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate them being on camera this round, but if we can if we can get them to uh, to wrap it up here and yeah. potentially get a side, a side game on... Uh, keep things rolling for you here at uh, Friday Night Modern. Yeah, we've got 23 minutes left. That's plenty that's, of that's time. That's plenty of time. Surely that's, one of our, our backup matches is, is not done already. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we can find out about that. Might have a bit of a lull here, you yeah. know, while they're finishing up a game. Yeah, yeah. We, we've, got, we've got a little bit of turnaround time here. It's just, uh, he's saying, the, he's just announcing he's going to do this action. 